Uh. You ready? Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to prettygoodcooking.com. Good. Tonight on the show, I'm going to make a turkey, chili, lentil, squash thingy with an apple relish. Uh, chutney, which is kind of the same thing, I think, but don't at me. Please just never at me. All right, let's begin. We got some apples, and these apples, I picked them from a local orchard, and I've got some ghee. I like ghee a lot, so that's what we're gonna use today. Let's get a big old spoon in there. All right, good enough. And we will start that heating up, kind of over a low, medium heat. Just want that to melt. And the second step, a la Steve Wallace, is to indulge in vitamin beer, which is not actually beer right now. I'm gonna have a gin and tonic. I am featuring four peel gin from Watershed Distillery. They make this stuff somewhere around here. Uh, you, you may have surmised it's not my first gin and tonic. Cool, is that melted? Yes. I'm a little bit uh, behind the curve with this dish, so I got my apples here. There's three apples. I measured the weight of these apples. It was approximately 20 ounces, unpeeled and unchopped. You really need about a pound or so of chopped apples, and I figured after peeling and coring and removing the unsavory bits of these here apples, that should get us pretty close. And if not, well, that's fine. Okay, so I'm rapidly chopping and peeling and, and whatever these these apples. Oh God, the butter's a little smoky. That's all right. I'm just gonna turn the heat all the way down. Yeah, it looks okay. I'm gonna sizzle these spices. This is a cinnamon stick. Two inches, two uh, star anise pods, and four cloves. We will kind of simmer and sizzle those spices in the ghee to infuse the flavors. And then we're gonna finely chop the apples. I just realized that I shouldn't really have been chopping the apples. I should have been mincing this ginger. So this is a little knob, a little knob of ginger. If you got prepared ginger, that would work just fine. Actually, I, I kind of wish I just had a, a jar or a tube of this shit rather than going through the pain of mincing it. Here we are. And uh, the amount of ginger you use is up to you. Kind of an intuitive thing. If you like the taste, add more. If you are less keen on it, add less. And Here's my knob o ginger that we will pop in here and sizzle as well. We're gonna sizzle that about a minute. Our next step will be to add just a tiny little bit of spice. These are some cayennes from my garden that I dried on a dehydrator. Uh, I crumpled up a, a, a few of them in the bag. So I'm gonna see if I can just get a little bit of, a little bit of pepper shake, which is mostly seeds and that's okay. <laughs> seeds will taste just fine in this and you won't even notice them, I don't think. So. This is more than what you would typically add, but it's not that spicy. So we'll go ahead and pop that in for a quick sizzle. And we're gonna go ahead and add our apples. All right, we've reached the point where I'm less worried about anything burning, because there's actually some stuff in the pot, thank the Lord. And to this, we will add a half cup of apple cider vinegar. Chutney often has kind of a sweet and sour thing going, so in addition to the natural sweetness of the fruit, we will add some sugar as well, and then the vinegar, vinegar will give us our sour note. We can go ahead and add this as well. And now that we have all this cold stuff in here, we can actually turn up the heat a little bit. Next up, I did a little bit of prep, just a, just a tiny bit, because I needed to organize my brain in order to be able to do this show. So in this uh, little seasoning cup, there is one teaspoon of cumin powder and one teaspoon of fennel powder, or fennel seed powder. And there's a little bit of ground black pepper as well in here. So we'll go ahead and use that as a seasoning. And in addition to that, we're going to add three tablespoons of brown sugar and three tablespoons of just regular white sugar. So in that goes. And the recipe that I'm kind of loosely following does not include salt, but I can't imagine salt being bad in this, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of salt. Okay, so it smells incredible. Uh, you know, the spices come through, the sweetness, the vinegar. So what we're gonna do is get this kind of simmering away and cooking down. I'll actually pop the lid on. So I'm gonna have that going for a little while. It's kind of on a low heat. I'm just gonna kind of let it cook down. So that's good to go. And we'll take a quick break so I can clean up reset. And then maybe I'll shotgun a Bud Light and then we'll proceed. Okay, so I got my squash here. Here it is, this is an acorn squash. 
And what do you do with acorn squashes? Well, I think one time we made like a chorizo stuffed acorn squash. Does that sound right? So essentially, we'll uh, we'll grab a, a rootin' tootin' scoopin' device, which today will be a knife, and we'll get that get that out of here. You could uh, save the seeds and roast them if you want. Kind of like pumpkin seeds. I ain't got time for that. I am actually curious if I can just cut this squash into pieces. Oh shit. Well, that, that'll make it hard to roast this. I didn't want to roast it anyways, okay? I, I wanted to basically cut out some time and just uh, carve it up and eat this squash. So instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is a little bit wasteful. You can see I'm losing some of the squash, but I'm basically gonna chop around here and then I'm gonna cube this bad boy up and just cook it in the pot with the rest of our ingredients. And if we end up with a little bit of skin, you know, I, what is that, e extra, extra fiber in your diet? And that's good enough for me. Uh, I'll do the same thing with the other part. Really, we're gonna be using this more for flavor and nutrition rather than for um, the texture. Cause I probably am gonna blend up part, parts of the soup today. All right, so here's my squash and I'll just chop it later. So I'm just gonna set it to the side for now. So like a mini dolls, chilies, etc. we're gonna start with the onion. And this is a big old sweet onion. It's a whole one. No halves to be found here. Of course, until I chop it in half and it becomes half an onion. And you can find all the letters of the word onion in the phrase. Often, often on the Nile, it is uh, only nighttime when the sun's not out. All right, so here's that onion that I've chopped into half for some reason, and I took both ends off. So uh, mincing it will be more difficult. Of course, nice job, Phil. Oh, we should timestamp this. Uh, today is probably October 25th, and uh, my wife is at least eight months pregnant, so we're just waiting for that baby to drop, and everything's fine. <laughs> All right, over here in our cooking pot, this is a Dutch oven. Today it's an American oven. We'll block some ghee in there with a little bit of extra squash bonus. And while that's heating up, I'll give you a little update on our chutney. So our chutney has released a significant amount of liquid. Check that out. Those apples are starting to soften up. It's looking real nice. And we'll hit this with uh, a masher at some point. Let's let that keep going. It smells real nice. What else can we do? Shotgun bud light. Transfer our onions to a bowl. And, oh, I don't really want a shotgun and Bud Light. I was just joking. There's no need for that. The fans would be upset. All right. <laughs> okay, here I go, shotgun and a beer. And like a, a real manly man, I'm creating an X in the bottom. We knew that would happen, John. Well, we're both covered in beard. Oh, I'm so sorry, John. You got wrecked. I only got a little wrecked. It's okay. It's just a light beard. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, enough of that nonsense. Back to business. Here's uh, yet more ginger. This will be a very gingery meal. John is excited. You want a ginger snack, John? So I'll go ahead and mince up some more ginger. I'll burp on it a little bit. Listen, you can you can judge me, and I will allow you to at me in this moment, viewer. But I kind of been on a Bud Light kick. It's just like the beer that sounds good. Maybe it's just my uh, descent slash ascent into fatherhood. But it's, I, I like the Bud Light right now. Okay, let's move on. Let's not think about that for too long. I got some garlic. This is from the store. The store garlic looked like ass today. I mean, there was like almost nothing. And they literally were selling some heads of garlic that were like half gone. Did you know that most of the world's garlic is grown in China? Viewer, you're buying cheap garlic. It might come from there. But uh, if, it, if it didn't, then it comes from somewhere else. That's what's important. I am using an obscene amount of garlic today because this soup I don't think it'll be light on flavor, but we're actually not gonna use like a, an insane amount of ingredients. So we're gonna really lean into that garlic flavor and kind of hope that it marries well with the chutney. <laughs> okay, somehow I have managed to smoke the ghee twice in one day and there's something in the pot that I do not know what it is. What in the f is this thing, John? Some kind of green shit? The excess of the squash? 
Oh, I bet it was squash related. I don't know, who cares? We'll get our unis going. Look at that uniform chop. You can see most of them are this size, but some of them are this size. We call that a home style. Let's see how that chutney's doing. Oh, check it out. Okay, so the this is interesting to me because I read about this. In the chutney, it releases the liquid and it kind of pulls it back in. So I think this is at a point where we can mash it up a little bit. So we're gonna just do a little bit of this. We don't want it to be applesauce, but we do want it to be a little bit more uniform as a chutney, kind of a chunky chutney. And I think that's it. I think that's good to go. So we'll take that off the heat, and in spite of our uh, our knowledge of heat temperatures, we're gonna give it a little taste. Ooh, that's good. Ooh. So the primary flavors are apple and brown sugar, which are very familiar and flavors that I love to eat. It has the sharpness from the vinegar and the beautiful spice palette that we included as well. Really, really tasty and literally is the perfect thing to dump on a turkey-based meal, which is probably, no matter how much you dress it up, it's gonna be a little bit boring. It's turkey. You eat turkey to be healthy. You don't eat turkey because you're excited about eating turkey. So this is gonna, a little dollop of this is gonna really take us to where we need to go. So that's good to go. We'll just let that chill there. You do want to fish out the whole spices at some point, but there's no hurry. You can do that anytime. So I'm gonna be cooking these onions for a little while longer. I want them to become dunnies, or at least halfway dunnies. And really just like, we, we don't need to caramelize them, but we need, we need to cook them down a little bit before we do anything else. If we would like, we can do some additional vegetable chopping. So maybe let's just get that out of the way. I got three carrots here, three carrots. So we'll go ahead and get this chopping. My intent, for these fine carrots are to, rather than be blended in with some of the other parts of the soup, I want these to be actually cooked as kind of chunks in the soup. Now you, you may have a different opinion on that, but basically I'm gonna blend up the squash and the onions and the lentils and kind of make a, a thick base. And then I'm gonna have little bits of uh, the turkey and then celery and carrot so that there's some texture to it as well. And you could do that in any kind of order or variety that you wanted, but that's kind of how I'm thinking about it tonight. So I'm just chopping carrots, trim our celery up a little bit, and we'll just give it the, the thin mints. I guess it's, it's actually a chop rather than a mince. Okay, how many of you at home think that my dogs like celery? None of you? Oh, wow, you're correct. Wow, look at this. How interesting is that? We have like some cooking marks on some parts of the pot, and this particular onion looks like it was painted. Look how weird that is. Not really sure what's going on in this pot right now. All right, let's go ahead and chop up the rest of our squash. Squash rings. And again, while that uh, squash, of course, would taste quite nice, if we spent the time to roast it up, we can get part of that flavor just from sauteing it in a pan. A little bit of caramelization goes a long way. So here I am, continuing to struggle to chop this squash. But the nice thing is that unlike a uh, ballpark hot dog, squash becomes soft when you cook it, rather than plump. Okay, our finished chutney is over here. Let's go ahead and fish out the larger spices if we can find them, which might be a little tricky. Some of the things in here, I'm not really sure what the hell they are anymore. But I mean, worst case, someone gets a big hunk of spice in their meal and you know, they can complain and you can tell them, well, you didn't cook. So let's go ahead and scoop this out into a jar. I can see some whole spices that I missed. That's fine. And that is extremely convenient that it pretty much just fills up a jar. How nice is that? Cool. And there's our chutney. Now, in the spirit of not wasting things, we're actually gonna cook our turkey in the dirty pot, dirty pot that had the chutney in it. So with the idea that we'll be able to pick up some of those nice flavors for the dish at large, which I think will be a nice way to go. And it'll save us one more dish. My squash and onions have a little bit of brown on them, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my garlic and ginger, like that, give it a quick stir, and let that brown up a little bit. And in our chutney pot, we'll get that heated up once again, and we'll add a little bit more ghee or cooking oil, whatever you'd like to use. You may have noticed I've used a lot of ghee so far. It's okay, you're eating a turkey and plant-based meal. It's okay to use some ghee, you'll be fine. I promise, unless you I have specific nutritional problems with that, then I can't promise anything. Uh, so we will be cooking the turkey and a couple of our vegetables there. And what I would have ideally used would have been better than bouillon vegetable shits, but I only have mushroom shits. 
which is the closest thing to vegetable shits that I have today. If you have just like plain old stock hanging around, I think that would also be nice. I just wanna add a little bit more umami to this before we proceed. So we'll continue to mix this around and give it a stir. If we add a little bit of liquid to deglaze, that'll taste quite nice, quite nice indeed. So this guy is already doing its thing. So today I will be using Whit Farm ground turkey. It comes in a bag, which is tube shaped. It's a tube bag, a tube bag of turkey. Please put that in the, the recipe uh, notes, John. One tube bag, which is uh, just over a pound. Go ahead and get that browning in this fine pot. Here's the meat cylinder. It's a cylindrical prism. I am gonna push this down into the pot and start breaking it up. And I think what I'll do is kind of push my squash and stuff to the side so I expose those parts of the pot. And it's totally optional. You could just use, you could use water. Water would be fine. But I happen to have a bottle of Gewürztraminer wine open. So I am gonna just pop a little bit of wine, just a, just a little bit. And we will scrape the bottom. And what you can see is that comes off pretty easily. And all of that nice flavor will be incorporated into the dish. Into the dish, into the, into the, into the dish. And of course, what I should have done is taste the wine for poison. You never know. Particularly if the wine has already been open. You never know if someone might uh, slip into your house to poison it. Let's go ahead and season our turkey just a little bit with some salt, some pepper. And for our intents and purposes today, we can go ahead and get some larger amount of liquid going in this while we cook the turkey. I think it is nice to actually brown some of the turkey. If you get the Malyard reaction going, that will add a little bit more flavor to your dish. And of course, you could also opt to brown the turkey before you do anything else. I didn't have time for that today. This was probably the fastest way that we could do this dish was by cooking the chutney and the soup and then the turkey kind of juggling those pots. Start with a quart of water, but it's definitely gonna need at least another. And we'll crank the heat up on this as well so we can get it simmering. It's quart number two. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up to a simmer. Got my turkey going here. And optional, very, very optional. You might even consider spicing your turkey at this time. And I'm gonna go wild and crazy. I'm gonna spice it with some garam masala, which is more of a finishing spice, but I think just getting a little bit of it caramelized onto the meat will be tasty. And while this is about half cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and add my other veggies, carrot and celery over here too. Just get all that browning up nicely. And for the moment, that's all we need to do. Almost. We gotta get those lentils in. Almost forgot. So I'm gonna use red lentils today. Uh, red lentils are typically split and they kind of melt into a soup when you cook them. So here they are. You can see they're inc incredibly thin. They've like obviously been split, so they should just melt right in. We're gonna add one cup of red lentils right in. So we will bring this to a boil, cook everything down, and in our second pot, these fine things will brown up nicely. That's it for now. See you soon. Okay, so my uh, nutritional base, as it were, has cooked down. You can see some of those lentils have burst and squash is tender. So at this point, I'm gonna first season this just a bit. And we're, again, we're improvising, but this is like Indian food, Americanized Indian food tangent, kind of. So I'm gonna add some cumin, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of turmeric as well. Now lower the heat, and then I am going to blend her up. This is a immersion blender. Works reasonably well for these kind of applications. And also, um, you should always be mindful if you're blending hot soup on a burner. It is much safer to take it off a burner. I'm being very lazy. And dangerous. And uh, yes, and a little bit dangerous too. I'll also comment, you don't need this to be perfectly pureed. Uh, in fact, leaving some big chunks of squash, check this out, you can see, some big pieces of squash like that still being in there will add some textural variety. So this doesn't need to be purely blended. But getting it to a soupier consistency is what we're looking for. All right, so where do we go from here? We take our additional components, carefully add them to the rest of the soup. And these will need to cook a while longer. Probably those vegetables are a little bit al dente, which is not what we're going for today. But already I'm pretty happy with where this is at right now. Let's give it a taste with what we're working with. 
Oh, it's so good. Oh, that's, this is like, it's what I imagined when I started on this. Mm. Straight off the bat, noon salt. I do think that it has an acceptable level of spice as it is. So this, you could just eat this as a very simple soup, very healthy, very tasty, but I think it will be really nice to serve this with our additions at the end. So let's go ahead and simmer that for a few more minutes until all of our carrots and celery are quite tender. I'm gonna try a carrot just to see what we're working with. It's mostly raw. So probably at least another 10 or 15 minutes just simmering this and then we can finish up. Really happy with the direction this is going. I think we have made a tasty and healthy meal so far. I can't wait to eat it. Be back soon. Okay, we've let this simmer until the vegetables are tender. They're actually not as tender as they should be, but I cannot wait any longer. And the soup is definitely done. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate it up. And what I'm going to do is try to plate this in a fancy way. We'll see how it goes. So here's my unassuming turkey lentil chili kind of thing, fairly basic. And my idea is that we can garnish it using this shot. I think it's called a jigger. And I'm gonna try to put the chutney and some other accompaniments in there because I think it'll be fun. And if you're not having fun while cooking, you're probably a normal person. <laughs> that is how cooking goes most of the time. My hope is that I can flip this over and let it sit on top, but I think it's gonna be hard to actually pull off. Shit, it's not working. There's my new idea. Wow, that did not work how I wanted it at all. Okay, so that was not what I had in mind, but I can scoop this as a, a garnish like so. And now it's just a spoonful rather than what I originally intended. It looks so fancy. It looks very fancy, John. Thank you very much. Thank you for your feedback. Let's see if uh, some yogurt fares any better. I don't think that it will, but maybe. Eh, whatever. Okay, and I personally like these kind of things with some finely minced onion and some cilantro as well. And of course, this would also be nice with some fresh citrus, lemon or lime but I'm just gonna leave it at that. At least for our photo, my garnishes didn't quite work how I hoped, but it looks nice. Okay, so let's try it just a little bit on its own. Really, really, really nice. The uh, squash is surprisingly sweet. I mean, it looks kind of like a lentil doll, but the squash really actually shines through in a way that is kind of surprising to me. Now let's try it with some chutney going on over here. That's crazy good. The most familiar flavor combo would be, for me at least, would be like pork chops that are smothered in apples and brown sugar. It's a very common Americanized dish, but it has all of the nice Indian spices as well. This is crazy good. I actually am super happy with how this turned out. And of course you can mix it all together for a big bowl of blob. Tastes great. This is a smashing success. I had a lot of fun making this, and this is the type of food that if you just eat this, you're gonna feel fantastic. Really high quality nutrition. It's not gonna make you feel awful. It's very, very filling. And in the cold times, it will warm your cold body. That's how you do it today. And we'll see you next time on PGC. Toodaloo!